I will explain this non-inverter Samsung refrigerator circuit board. If it gets faulty, I will tell you what points to check in this circuit board to fix it. I have removed the circuit board from the refrigerator. This connector has line and neutral written on it. 220 AC volts will pass through these pins. After this if I follow the prints of this connector. This is the line print. The line print is moving further to these relays. Let's check how many relays are installed here. Five different relays are installed here for different functions. The white relay is for starting the compressor and is the main. I have changed this relay in this circuit board because this relay was bad. The compressor wasn't started, which is why I replaced it. Also, there is a relay for the heater. These two relays are for the valves, and I have already made a video on these valves, which will be linked at the end. This fifth relay is for turning on the display LED of the refrigerator. This relays are getting direct phase supply, and when these relays switch on, the line and neutral circuit will be complete. All the functions will start to work. Next, let's talk about how the rest of the circuit is working and turning on. You can see these two points. This is a fuse installed here. Let me show you from the front side of this circuit board. This is the fuse, which is of 5 amperes, which is used to protect the circuit and also to protect the compressor if there is a problem. These are the prints of the fuse. After this, a disc type metal oxide varistor is installed. These MOVs are used as high voltage surge protectors for circuits, and if more than 250 volts pass through the circuit, this MOV will short circuit, these two fuses will also blow up. And if these two fuses don't blow, then the breaker in your home will blow up. This will protect the rest of the circuit. And this is how this safety component will protect the circuit. Now, if I move further, a fuse is installed here, but let's talk about it later. But before it, a capacitor is installed. After this, a line filter is installed. The icons of coils are made here. This line filter is used to protect the circuit from electrical spikes. The one capacitor is this, and the other is this. Both are for reducing electrical spikes. After this, a resistor, which is blue in color, is installed. And this is a 200 kilo ohms resistor. With it, a Zener diode, a capacitor, and an optocoupler installed. So what is the use of these as the SMPS circuit is mounted here on this side of the circuit? This is a zero crossing detector circuit. I will tell you about the zero crossing in detail in another video. I will now tell you how the SMPS circuit of this PCB works. When the electricity passes from the PTC sensor, it directly moves to these rectification diodes. If these go bad, the SMPS circuit will not work. Mostly, any two diodes between these four rectification diodes go bad. You can check these diodes with a multimeter. And after that, you can trace the fault. A switching IC and a boosting capacitor are mounted next. As the voltages are converted from AC to DC, 320 DC volts pass through this capacitor. Then, this turns on the DC chopper. The number of the switching IC is TNY266PN. Let's talk about its function now. This is the first number pin of this IC, and the name of this pin is BP. This is the bypass pin. A capacitor will be attached to this pin, which will be attached to the negative side of the capacitor. Then, this IC will function. The capacitor is a must. The second and third are the source pins of the IC. The chopper will turn on at low voltages when the chopper switches on the switching IC. The capacitor positive trace is directly attached to the chopper. The circuit will be completed when the closed loop from the positive to the negative end of an electrical circuit is met. Otherwise, the circuit does not work. This is the negative side, which is attached to the source pins. This trace is attached to the other two pins. These are the HV return pins, which are attached to source pins, but they are attached in this manner. The high side is the return, which is further moving here and is attached to these capacitors. Let me show you the capacitor from the front side. These are the two capacitors. Through these two capacitors, the negative is generated for this system, because the positive will be generated from here, and thus the circuits complete. Now, this pin is the drain pin of this IC. When this switching IC will turn on, the built-in MOSFET in this IC will turn on, which will be joined with the chopper. The negative and the positive loop will be completed. Thus, this circuit board will start working. Now, let's talk about pin number 4 of this IC. But a circuitry is attached before this pin. This is an under and over voltage pin, and other than this, the feedback is also taken through this pin. When this optocoupler turns on, the voltages will start to move through the IC. This resistor and the diode are installed for safety. If they short circuit, this feedback will not work. The other parts of the circuitry will saved. Installing a diode here can make it easier to check under and over voltages. That is why it is installed here. This is a Zener diode. The resistor attached to it is a fusible resistor. Its value is 6 to 7 ohms. 
if one or both of these components go bad, the circuit will not work. Let's talk about the low side of this circuit. The voltages on these pins of the chopper are not received in the low side circuit. Rather a capacitor is used to capture the voltages. We should get 12 volts across these capacitor pins. If 12 volts are present on these pins of the capacitor, it means the capacitor is fine. But if there is a problem with the voltages, then there may be a problem with the capacitor and the chopper may also be damaged. A capacitor of 470 microfarads and 25 volts is installed here. If 12 volts are passing through this capacitor, then 5 volts will be applied to this next IC. Because it is a 5 volt regulator IC, this pin is its 12 volt input. The middle pin is the ground. 5 volts will be received at this pin. Then the microcontroller and other components will be turned on. Another capacitor is placed in this circuit. It is also 470 microfarads and 25 volts. See this capacitor, but let me explain its function. This feedback optocoupler has to be turned on too, right? So this circuit is designed to operate this optocoupler. 7 to 8 volts should be passing here. Only then will this optocoupler remain on. Because if this optocoupler doesn't work, this feedback won't work either. Due to this, the entire PCB will not work either. Even if something goes wrong in these components, the feedback or circuit will not work. In this circuit, a Zener diode is added along with a resistor of some ohms. I think this one is 100 ohms, and the other is 200 ohms. Apart from this, a diode is also attached here. Well, the chance of failure on the low side is very less. But even if something goes wrong, the functions will not work. Apart from this, a TVS is also installed here, which is used to prevent electric spikes. So if it also becomes short circuit or open circuit, this will make this chopper absolutely direct, causing the positive and negative to attach to each other, which will make the chopper not turn on. Even if this 5 volt regulator goes bad, the circuit still does the problem. Even if the zero crossing does not work, the circuit will still not turn on. Most of the problems are made on the high electrical side. There is very little problem with the low side circuit. Also, let me tell you this is ULN 2003 IC, which is installed here for turning on all these relays. Even if this IC gets damaged, the relays will not turn on. The microcontroller does not directly operate the relays. The microcontroller first sends a signal to the ULN 2003 IC and then it operates these relays from 12 volts. Join our membership on Patreon, link in the description. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch the next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.